What's up everybody, Greg here from Lens Pro to Go and Lens Rentals, and in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Phantom VO 4K high-speed camera. We're gonna look at a couple different tests on the sensor. The first one is gonna be the high ISO performance, and then we're gonna look at the exposure recovery, so over and under exposing image to see how well it performs in those different environments. First up is gonna be the high ISO performance, so let's get into it. Starting off at ISO 640, this is the lowest ISO of the camera, and we're also in a Rec. 709 color space. Once we switch into the log profiles, we get a limited availability of which ISOs we can use. Going up to 800 ISO, you can also see up in the right-hand corner, we have a 300% zoom in or crop in on the image to see how well this is performing. We're still getting a really clean image at this 800 ISO. Going up to 1000 ISO, a third of a stop, we're still having a really solid image and we're not seeing too much color noise introduced. We are starting to see a little bit of dancing around in the gray areas. Going up another third of a stop to 1250, we're still having a really clean image and this is definitely usable. Again, just adding a little bit more of that like movement in there, but no color noise. Going up again, another third of a stop to 1600 ISO. We're starting to get quite a bit of dancing around in there, but you're really only seeing this once you start zooming into that 300%. When you're back out at 100%, it looks pretty clean. Up to 2000 ISO. Again, these are just small steps. We're starting to see a little bit of color noise introduced into those darker areas, but you can still clean this up with some software in post-production. Up to 2500 ISO. This is definitely starting to get really noisy and we're seeing a lot more in the shadow areas. You can still clean this up and it doesn't look too fake. It still has like a really nice grain look to it instead of that color noise. And then up to 3200 ISO, which is the highest ISO in the Rec. 709 color space. We're definitely getting a lot of digital noise in there. Now we're gonna go over to 3200, but we're gonna be in log one, which actually brings down the ISO noise to about a 2000 ISO in the Rec. 709. So if you wanna reduce the noise and you have to bump it up, I definitely recommend going into this log one profile. And then up to ISO 5000, which is the native for log two. We're seeing a, quite a bit of noise in here, definitely more than the log one, but we are up at 5000 ISO now, and this is definitely usable if you clean it up in post. So that was the high ISO performance, and this thing actually does pretty well, a lot better than I thought it would. You can really push it up into that 2000, 2500 ISO range, and if you switch over into those log profiles like log one and log two, you can actually get even a little bit higher and have a really clean image. Next up, let's take a look at the exposure recovery over and underexposing the image about five stops in both directions. So let's start off with underexposure. First up, this is our correct exposure and we're at an ISO of 640 right now, and we're gonna start by underexposing the image. So here's our one stop underexposed. On the left side, you see the actual shot, which is the underexposed image, and on the right is the recovered shot and what we've been able to bring back using the recovery. Uh, in the middle, you can see our correct exposure still, so you can see how the recovered shot looks to the correctly exposed shot. Now we're going up to two stops under, we're starting to get pretty dark on the actual shot already, and we're able to bring a lot of that information back. Going to our three stops underexposed, we're able to bring quite a bit of this information back, but comes with it a little bit of noise, and you could definitely recover some of this in post-production, but you are gonna to start to soften up the image quite a bit. Going to four stops, we're looking really, really dark on our actual shot. As you can see in the recovered shot, we're bringing a ton of digital noise in there as well, a lot of blues and greens dancing around. This is gonna be hard to recover in any sort of noise reduction software. And then all the way to five stops, this is like almost completely black on our actual shot, and our recovered one is just bringing all of that noise back out. Going back to our correct exposure, and now we're gonna go in the opposite direction and overexpose the image. So starting off with overexposing by one stop. Again, the actual shot is on the left and the recovered shot is on the right. This is one stop overexposed and we're definitely able to bring that back and have a really good looking clean image. Going to two stops overexposed, we're actually already starting to fall apart. If you look at the mug on the shelf above me or even the skin tones on my face, all of that information is starting to get lost and we're getting a lot of clipping. Going to three stops over, we're having a lot of the same problems but even more exaggerated here and it doesn't look good. To four stops overexposed, this is basically completely gone. I mean, even at three stops, I would never use this. And we're actually starting to get some artifacting in the footage on the four stops overexposed because it's so bright. Going to five stops overexposed, pretty much the same as four stops, completely unusable. Definitely don't overexpose this camera more than one stop. So that was the exposure recovery test for the Phantom VO 4K. And this thing actually does a really good job in underexposed environments, a lot better than it does in overexposed environments. When we get about two stops, we start to lose a lot of information after that in the overexposed scenario, where with the underexposed, we were able to bring quite a bit of that back, even down into that like four stop range. 
Let me know what you guys think about these camera tests in the comments below. If you have any questions about them, let me know as well. If you wanna see more camera tests just like this one with a bunch of different cameras, check out the playlist at the end of this video and make sure to subscribe to the channel for new videos every single week and I'll see you in the next one.